It's time for the 1430 Connection on 1430 WNAV and 99.9 FM. Spotlighting news, newsmakers, and important community issues. Now, with this week's edition of the 1430 Connection, here is WNAV news anchor Donna Cole. Welcome to the 1430 Connection. I'm Donna Cole. I am in the studio today with County Executive Stuart Pittman, and thank you again for joining me, County Executive Pittman. Thank you, Donna. You can call me Stuart. All right. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I just apologize for doing that before. It's going to be tough. But yes, you are Stuart. And uh, jury duty. Tell me how jury duty went. Jury duty was uneventful. They did not want me. Oh, well, yeah. you know, maybe next time around. Right. But you got your check and you got some lunch. And um, I got my 15 It was $15 cash, actually, they gave us. And were you able to get lunch with that? I got a breakfast sandwich and a coffee, yes. Okay. Um, do you love your new office? Would have you I changed did. right away? Are there are photos in there that you added. Are there stuffed animals now that you have? It? What, what have you changed? I haven't changed much. I have a few things to bring in. I put in one one picture on the wall, and and remember the the boot with the duct tape around it that I used in the ad on TV. Yes, that's there. Okay, and explain that for those that don't know the. It says that I am frugal, and I am. So when people come into my office asking for things that cost a lot of money, I slide the boot across the the desk with the duct tape on it to remind them. This is you. That I am frugal. Um, what do you think resonated most with the voters of Anne Arundel County? Your platform was responsible development, traffic concerns. Uh, what am I missing there? <laughs> well, I, that is what resonated, I think, more than anything else. You know, you have Democrats, you have Republicans that tend to vote that way. You have people who show up for some elections and not others. Obviously, we had a much bigger turnout this time among the people who voted for my side. Steve actually got about the same number of votes he got four years ago. Mm-hmm. It's just that more people voted, so it was a larger electorate. And I think that that was a wave. Some people say it was a blue wave. I call it a civic wave of people who just felt as though elections matter, uh, what our local government does matters. And like you said, traffic and overcrowded schools and the growth of this county, people feel like it's been a little bit reckless. It hasn't been planned as well as it should be. And d- development projects have popped up where they didn't expect them. And I came in saying, look, we've got to maintain the natural beauty of this county and we've got to preserve the best of it. Uh, bellwether for 2020, do you think? Yes, I think that I think that people are more engaged than they've been. Uh, you know, people um, don't vote enough. I mean, people people vote when they feel like there's something to vote for, and when they feel, or sometimes when they feel threatened by something. And I think people are realizing. I think part of it's the national scene, but they're they're seeing that that there's local uh, issues as well. And it's just great to see people out there getting engaged. What's the biggest problem you see being able to do something about right away here in Anne Arundel County? Right away. Well, you know, the the 20-year general development plan mm-hmm. is something that I was elected to take control of. Uh-huh. People wanted, um, wanted, I think, for me to come in and say, let's make sure that the future plan um, is... Uh, recognizing that we need to take care of our environment and take care of the people who live here. And so the general development plan um, is underway and the planning department has been working on it. It's due by the end of the year. And so we have to come in here and quickly move forward on changing the composition of the Citizens Advisory Committee to some degree and making sure that we're doing a plan that that reflects my values and the values of the people who voted for me. All the public meetings were already held. Is that true or not true? They did seven... uh, listening sessions Mm -hmm. uh, the planning department did back last year and they did um, a uh, public input at various schools around the county right both at the meetings and online Uh and and that was useful stuff Um, we during the campaign went around to the 16 small areas and we're going to continue. We're going to do more of that. Uh, we're going to actually take the the recommendations that were made in the 16 small area plans, which was a big, it was a political issue, but it was people felt strongly that their, their local communities needed a voice in the general development plan. And um, so I've talked to Phil Hager, the head of planning. They're putting together a report on the status of all the recommendations from those, mm-hmm. which is what we went around the county talking about for during the campaign. And there will be a report. It'll come out. It'll be made public. And then we'll do another round of those meetings and we'll get more, more input. And is Phil Hager staying as far as you're concerned? He's staying for now. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I feel as though Phil Hager has done some things. He's only been there for just over a year. And he's actually made some good changes in the Department of Planning. And, and I sat down with him right away. And I like a lot of what he's doing. So, yeah. All right. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, more with the county executive. This is Donna Cole on the 1430 Connection. We will be right back.
Welcome back to the 1430 Connection. I'm Donna Cole. In the studio with me today is County Executive Stuart Pittman. He wants the voters, he wants the citizens, and me to call him Stuart. No, no, Mr. County Executive, huh? Well, you call me anything you want. Okay. I'm well, happy with Stuart. All right. Even Stu. Okay. So we just talked about Phil. He's going to be staying on as far as uh, right now with planning and zoning. And uh, any other big changes we should know that you want to, you haven't announced yet? Here's the perfect opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't told the heads of the departments, but you can tell me. We won't tell anyone. <laughs> that would not be fair. No, it would, but recreation and parks, uh, police, fire. Are you planning changes in the future? Some of those and not others. Okay. And that's as far as we're going to go with yeah. that question. Yeah. <laughs> I had a conversation with Rick Anthony last month. He was unsure about his job status. We did an interview, and we talked about a... Uh, an issue near and dear to my heart. Actually, it was my head. I don't know if you know what happened to me November 2017, and you do know what happened to me? You were sprayed, yes. Okay, so yes. do you... Down at Jug Bay. Down at Jug Bay. Yeah. So bi-glyphosate is the scientific name. The brand names are Roundup or Aqua Neat. And glyphosate, the state of California has ru ruled it a cancer causing, a, it causes cancer. The European Union has tried to ban it, but if they ban it, they're going to ban all food sources. So they're trying to figure that out. You know about glyphosate. I'm not enough to tell you about glyphosate, probably. Yeah, I mean, farms farms use some <clears throat> some of these sprays. On our farm, we don't use as much because we're, we're pasturing horses mostly and we don't need to spray. But um Yes, I'm familiar with it. So it's used in county parks still. There is no aerial spraying of it. Do you plan on bringing aerial spraying back unless that's... I have no plan to bring aerial spraying back. Good. If I said that, I think you'd chase me right out of this room, <laughs> wouldn't you? It might me or the other woman that it happened to. But I don't, you know, it's just my... Not until you're hit in the head with this does this matter, I guess, sometimes to you. Right, especially um, in a public park. It, especially it, in a... Well, in the public parks, it's still being used. So that is my question. Is that something... It's being uh, used, but not aerial spraying. Not aerial right? spraying. Okay. It's being used in, uh, you know, spraying on the areas where it's needed. Uh, Rick and I talked a lot about it. He he said he was looking into some other thoughts, had to talk to some other people about the the benefit of glyphosate, if there is one. Phragmites, which is why it's used, mm -hmm. um, an invasive grass, uh, might serve a good purpose as a way to stop erosion. Uh, you, yeah, I mean, when a weed is noxious and when it's not is something that, that um, is not decided at the county level, but you know, we can decide what we really want to go aggressively after. Um, I mean... I have a fairly open mind on this stuff. I'm not a scientist, so I have to listen to to what the scientists say, and they do all kinds of research. and And I guess there's some politics that gets involved uh, in in what chemicals are banned and what chemicals are allowed. Um, I know that it's just not feasible sometimes to get rid of some of the noxious plants by hand and mm -hmm. dig them up by the roots. Uh, and that chemicals are are the only feasible way to do it. Otherwise, we you know these things grow and they take over. Um, so. It's also um, on on that. Yeah, okay. You know. Your ears are open. Yeah. It's also on the, uh, well, I can show you, you can have this, the Anne Arundel County Public Schools list of uh, approved pest management uh, uh, chemicals. It's right there. Glad to say this. But they they're. Have their own list. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. And ironically, with but you don't have anything to do with this, you are automatically opted out of receiving notification as a parent in Anne Arundel County Public Schools on this instead of opted in. And I, I just learned this because I just became an Anne Arundel County Public Schools parent back in September. Interesting. Because I know you're an Anne Arundel County Public Schools parent, yes? Yes, I have nine-year-old twins at Davidsonville Elementary. And I have not opted in to be notified. You're notified when they spray each if time? If you opt in, yes. That's my understanding. Hmm. So there's something for you and the listeners. Yeah. All right, moving on from that, uh, we're going to move into another very not at all controversial topic, Crownsville. It's not that contra well <laughs> there's there's pretty close to consensus in this county on what should be done with Crownsville. Well, so among my, the residents anyway. I think so. My news director though just did an interview with Mark Burdett with Chesapeake Sports and Entertainment Group who is full bore in and he's saying they're moving ahead, ramping up and sounds like it's a done deal as far as that interview goes and that will it'll be put up on our Facebook and Twitter as well. It sounds like there's nothing stopping them from from this photo, which is a whole lot of lacrosse fields and uh, yes. stadium where graduations can be held for public schools. And 
Yeah, so she just did this interview with him yesterday, Mm -hmm. and as far as she said, her exact words were, sounds like a done deal. I've met with Mark Burdett, and he's very enthusiastic about this project, which makes it sound like a done deal, maybe. Uh, And they're well-intentioned. You know, Mm -hmm. they really do want to provide a space for tournaments, and this idea of doing lots of ball fields is it's got a lot of merit because we need more ball fields. I don't believe we need 22 ball fields in one location. I think we need ball fields around the county. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't believe that Crownsville Hospital Center is the place to do it. Phase phase one is the ball fields in the stadium and all of that. Uh, phase two includes the hotel and the restaurants. And you can't do this in an RA zone piece of property that has no sewer and water. Nobody in the county that I know of really wants to sacrifice that green space in the middle of our county. If we build hotels and restaurants at Crownsville Hospital Center, that's basically an extension of the mall, of the Annapolis Mall. It moves up General's Highway, and it ain't happening if I'm county executive. Hold that thought. It okay. ain't happening if you're county executive. However, however, I think it would be great to have a place for uh, for professional lacrosse in Anne County. I just don't think this is likely to be the place. All right. We're going to take another short break. More when we come back on the 1430 Connection. Welcome back to the 1430 Connection. I'm Donna Cole. In the studio with me today is County Executive Stuart Pittman. We're talking about Crownsville. He says it ain't happening as it's currently envisioned. No, and I've said this during the campaign, and I said it in my inaugural speech. I had a wonderful meeting out there with the Crown. Um, we did 16 of these community forums, and before we did the one for the Crownsville area, um, which was also uh, um, it was a follow-up on the small area plan for Crownsville, which was very clear that this needs to remain green and open that space. Um, but the General's Highway Council of Civic Organizations uh, came to me before that, and they said, "Look, we've we've been looking at this issue. Uh, we've gotten together with some developers of solar farms." We really think that we could put together a plan for that land if the county would acquire it, mm-hmm. which the county has been asked to acquire it by the state over and over again, um, that we could put together a plan that creates revenue with some solar farms there, um, creates picnic areas and trails connected to Bacon Ridge and other green space, uh, possibly some ball fields as well. And most importantly, what, what I was really moved by from this community, these organizations, was that they want to embrace the organiz- the nonprofit organizations that are doing addiction treatment and other services there. So by giving them the security of knowing that the, the land is not going to be developed, if the county can control it, uh, we can we can allow those organizations to invest in their properties, to get loans to be able to upgrade, and really have a place where mental health and addiction treatment are happening in a green area where there's nature, where people can get outside and, and feel the healing power of nature. And to the Bayhawks, you say... How do they get a stadium and some fields? Is that is that doable? Maybe on the same, the site or no? I don't think so. I don't okay. think so. I mean, the Bayhawks have have done architectural drawings, but nobody has told told them that we're moving forward on this. There's a there's a study being done, yet another study uh, being done by the state by the stadium authority mm-hmm. to look at options. Uh, you know, they've said very clearly that they need an exits off of 97 to do this, which they would with that kind of traffic. You can't put they that They say through three years and it's done. But nobody's saying yes. So, But it is state property now, yes? It's state and property And you just now. saw this seemingly backroom maybe type of deal and negotiation going on with the Redskins, yes? Do they, you think this could be the same? I mean... Do, look, it was, it was just less than two years ago that the last task force for Crownsville was put together, and it was state and local people. And the, the final report from that task force was the number one recommendation was to ask County Executive Shu to reconsider his decision and take ownership of the property. People locally wanted that. People at the state level wanted that. There's no reason to believe at this point that they're going to say no. Okay. Have you talked to a solar company already about it? Uh, I've talked to some people who are in the field. Uh, We haven't had a a full study done. In order to do this, we're going to have to put together a a committee for a plan for Crownsville, and it's going to take some time. And it may be solar. It may not be solar. The solar idea has a lot of merit because it creates revenue. So talk to Uh, people in the field of uh, alternative energy, I'm guessing. Well, 
them as well as when? people who would help put together the plan to turn it into open space that the community has access to, as well as, of course, people who would look at the buildings. And there have been a lot of assessments done of the buildings and what kind of mitigation has to be done for asbestos and mm -hmm. and um, um, and what can be done there uh, with those buildings and which ones need to be taken down. One of the exciting things is that by leaving the ground um, natural and not pl not digging it all up the way we would have to for the Bayhawks proposal or uh, something like that. A lot of the asbestos is underground in these pipes. So there's the sewage from those buildings went into a treatment area and then they would spray it on the fields like fertilizer, th but it would go out through pipes that have asbestos in them that are underground. Mm. So the idea of these solar farms, which are usually eight to 10 acres when they do solar farms about the size of the spray fields. Mm -hmm. That then you take the wires that have all that electricity, you put them backwards through those same pipes, and you you, you bring it all to one place um, where it goes into the grid for electricity. And yet, so you have that underground system already, and you don't have to um, do anything about the asbestos underground. But the pipes are still uh, have the asbestos. They're undis undisturbed and safe, yeah. Interesting. Are you learning more than you thought you ever would? I am learning so much in this job. It's like <laughs> <laughs> What's been the biggest surprise so far? There's, there, it's learning. I mean, we're going around from department to department getting briefings, and I've had two, three actually briefings with the whole budget team, just learning about all the revenue sources and the projections for those revenue sources. And and uh, there, I, politicians like to be the authority on everything. Right. They know it all yeah. uh, the minute they get it into office. It's not true. I mean, somebody who's in my job has got to spend most of their time. And even for the next four years, I'll be learning. Okay, so I'm asking you, what was the biggest surprise that made you say, really? Does it? I don't know that it was a surprise that I have a lot to learn. Uh, I mean, all my life, <laughs> that's been the case. It's <laughs> the case for everybody. If you're not listening and learning, you're dying. Uh, but uh, what I realized after just a few days was that I could spend all my time absorbing information and get zero done. So what I've done is I've kept a list of the things that I've promised that I will do. And I keep adding to that list ideas, things that we have to move Is this a on. list on paper or do you keep it electronically? I'm trying to find out what kind of person you are. <laughs> electronically. Okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Um, and I can access it on my phone, my computer. My so laptop. it's a Google thing. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, and I add to it and take from it. But because I'm afraid that I will forget that, I, that, that nobody will follow through. And it's great to have staff to mm -hmm. follow up on things. But, but I have this fear that four years will go by. And we'll still have this list and we won't have gotten it done. And so we need to make sure that we're being proactive and moving forward at the same time that we're responding. So let to me crises. guess, you're sending, sending your list out to your department every day. Well, I'm not sending the whole list to everybody every day. It's not that bad. <laughs> with, a, with the memo, don't forget. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, part of it is, is also um, developing the staff. And we've got a great, great team that's come together. But it still takes time for everybody to figure out what their role is, for me to figure out who's best at what and, and make sure that everybody's got got the right agenda that they're working on. All right, this is going to be a two-part uh, interview. The second part will air next Friday at 2. We're going to wrap this one up. Join us next Friday at 2 for the second part of this. This is Donna Cole on the 1430 Connection. We will see you next week. Great. It feels like we're just getting started. I'm glad we're going to do more. <laughs>